Once you're going to hear the term vacuum leak and suction leak, you can use those interchangeably. Basically, it's air getting into the system somewhere at the inlet at the pump. This will cause the pool to lose suction when you hook up a vacuum to it. It just doesn't have enough power to pull the water the extra 50 feet. So this particular pump also has a vacuum leak or suction leak. I suspect it's coming from right here. It looks like someone has put some silicone here in the front. You see a lot of air coming out of the return line, so there's definitely air getting into the system. So air continues to coming out of the return jet, even when the pool's been running for one or two minutes. There's a telltale sign that there's a suction or vacuum leak in your pool. Another indicator is when you hook up your manual vacuum to the skimmer, the pool will lose its prime. But the vacuum leak is not affecting the top surface skimming. When I hook up my manual vacuum or an automatic cleaner to this pool, it's going to stop the pump from priming. So in order to manually vacuum the pool with the vacuum leak, what I do is I use an automatic cleaner skimmer regulator valve. This one here is for the Hayward cleaner. So the way these regulators work for the automatic cleaners is that you hook up the hose here, then you can adjust the surface skimming so that water can be pulled for the surface. This is why this works when you have a vacuum leak. Some of the water will be coming from the surface still, along with your vacuum. Depending on the setup you're using to vacuum your pool, you may need a hose connector like this here. I'm using a canister, so I need a hose connector to hook it up to the skimmer adapter. So I'll go ahead and open up this valve so some water will be pulled in from the surface skimming still. It will allow me to vacuum the pool very slowly. So I just simply insert this into the skimmer. So you can see I'm still able to vacuum the pool, I just have to move very slowly. I'm going to go ahead and pull the vacuum out. You can see how much suction this actually had as I was vacuuming. It wasn't much, but it was enough to vacuum the pool. So you can see I had some suction. Ultimately, the solution will be to fix the vacuum leak in the pool so you can manually vacuum it with no problem. But that's a quick trick of how to vacuum a pool with the vacuum leak. And I also suggest using a heavy vacuum when you do this as the suction is low. You want to try to get the heaviest vacuum you can. That way you can keep it on the bottom of the pool without it floating. This is the Pentair ProVac. I use this on my pool route. So I'm at a pool where the pump doesn't have any kind of vacuum leak or suction leak. You'll see how it primes right away. So a telltale sign of a vacuum or suction leak is that the pool takes a while to prime up. There's no water in the pump. So a suction or vacuum leak has many causes. It could be a bad pump o-ring. could be a bad o-ring in the union. Or it could just be a leaking PVC union. So the reason why I'm at a cleaner hookup to your pool where the vacuum leak won't work Again, the water needs to be pulled an extra 40 feet. It doesn't have enough power. If you redirect some of the suction towards the skimmer to get the pool primed, there's not going to be enough power to get the vacuum operating. The automatic cleaner requires quite a bit of suction to move in your pool. And here's another pool with a vacuum leak. I'll show you what happens to the pump when I hook up the manual vacuum directly to the skimmer. You see right now the pump is fully primed. You can see the filter pressure here. And you can see the skimmer has good velocity. Let me go ahead and hook up the manual vacuum. See the pump start to lose its prime until the pressure drops too. And of course, for best results, it would be optimal to patch the vacuum or suction leak by the equipment that we can get full power of the vacuum. But in the meantime, you can use this as a way to vacuum the pool.